Welcome to Gay Like Me Conversations, where we discuss all things central to the black LGBTQ community. Although some conversations intersect with the black community as a whole. But either way, you're going to laugh, maybe even cry a bit, and you'll definitely learn and grow. It's time to start the show. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and true. <laughs> what? It just popped up. I thought you were going to do something. <laughs> Good day, thinkers, okay. thought leaders. Mm. Yeah, keep on talking, child. We got, huh, we late, honey. We know. No, no, no. You this were late. Way. I'm not late. Boy, go there. You must put your ass over, bitch. <laughs> this way? Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Hey, here we are. All right. We need some oh, white folks is... working on staff. <laughs> Good day, thinkers, <laughs> thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart. And I'm Derek J. And we are here with another episode of Gay Like Me. And yes, I was late today. I had to go to a birthday dinner, and they took forever to bring me back my damn credit Don't card. Don't you hate that? I was like, I said, ma'am, I told you I had to be gone by 8.30. <laughs> Why it took you so long to bring back my credit card? I do not know. That was me Friday. I went to a birthday dinner, too, and I was late for my live on Friday. But anyway, we're here. Yes. And um, I'm already predicting that my friend is going to be a little uh, squeamish in this conversation. No, no, you know what? I this prepared one's... myself. I, I, I prepare myself mentally. Okay. For this conversation okay. of um, sex mm -hmm. and how do we prepare for sex? Well, how did you prepare mentally for this conversation? I thought about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, what? I mean, I don't know what else to do, but. I thought about it a lot. I mean, uh -huh. I kept. I mean, you know, I so saw. I'm, I'm calm. I'm zen. Um, you know, I'm I'm here in a good space. Thank you, Nisi. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay, Derek. Craig is always it's late. <laughs> Girl, I have never been late for this, but uh, but I have been late on mine. Yeah, <laughs> I've been late on mine. Um, so talk about that. So yes, yeah. As y'all guys know, that I, I we have the conversation a lot. Um, I have not had sex, but you know, but when we start talking about this conversation, I thought about, I was like, you know, that's also one of the reasons too, because there's so much that go along with, cause I, I don't think I'm a top. <laughs> Why <are> you? <laughs> I'm not Because <laughs> you said, I don't think I'm a top. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, because of the way you just gestured. Oh, okay. I mean, um, I was, you know, so, and I do know that there's a lot of preparation uh -huh. that comes with getting you tapped. Know, getting tapped. And I don't think that I just, I don't want to do all that. I, before, and it's a very. You um, try what? Communication is our partner. Clarity is our friend. You tried to get tapped, or you tried to no. I tried prepare. prepare. I tried to prepare. Okay, just in case. Just in case. You know, because I was one of my host friends, and you know they like to be. They say you should always be ready. <laughs> oh. uh, so I tried to prepare, but it was very. It was just. It was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot, and it's like, and it takes time. Yeah. And then it. It takes a lot of it, time. It's funny that you said, you know, you, you got to be prepared. You said one of your friends said uh -huh. something about you always got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. I know folk that used to prepare, even if they didn't have anybody in mind that they were going to have sex mm -hmm. with. But those of you who may not know what we're talking about, because I, I always try to meet people where they are. So if you're going to be the, on the receiving end as a gay man, you're trying to get fucked, uh, you got to flush all of that food and stuff out. Yes. So you got to use an animal. But I know friends, I've had friends that, you know, like if they were going to the club for mm -hmm. that night, they would prepare all day. All day. And yeah. they would, they would, you know, they would flee. Mm -hmm. And so that if they met somebody at the club and they were gonna go home, they would already be prepared. Yeah, that's just a lot of work. That I just thought I worked, I just don't think I am mentally prepared for. Right. Because I try like I said, I tried. It was like, Jesus, you gotta do all this stuff. And then, then you gotta sit there till it's all gone. It's right. this is a lot. So, you know how I've been saying I wanted to set my intention for every conversation. So yes. my intention for this conversation was really so that some young gay boy might come across this video mm -hmm. at some point because he may not have examples of gay people in his life. Mm -hmm. um, 
so maybe he'll come across this YouTube video and know how to prepare. And I don't mean just in terms of being penetrated. I mean just knowing how to go and shower mm -hmm. all of your parts. Gotcha. Effectively. Because hygiene means different things for different people. That is true. But as some people like different things. Yeah, then, but then also for we do have women on this panel today. Yes, we do. So, so it's also for, yeah, yes. So it's also for women to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but while we're here, you guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share this conversation um, that we're having right now. Um, let's see, eating habits play a factor in how long it takes. Also, and I eat terribly. Well, bro, I didn't say it. You did. Oh no, I. I know. I do. I'm not. Where are we talking, girl? Okay. Bitch, you ain't no fucking nutritionist, so that's not. <laughs> <it. laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm like, girl, you was giving like you. What you're not gonna do is food shaming. You already do a lot of shaming, not, Greg. You already do a lot of shaming. That's not do food shaming. Well, here's what I was gonna say. What you said about, about what you said a moment ago, um, in terms of preparing mm -hmm. and people like different things. Yes. So once upon a time, it was a boy named Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a little piece uh -huh. who liked me fresh from the gym. Did you oblige? I sure did. What well, he used to like, and then, then listen, we all grown, and uh, we need the charger oh. for the laptop. That's right there. Um, hold on one second. Sorry, y'all. I forgot to plug the, the computer up. Just rush and try to be on time. Okay. So he, he used to like it fresh from the shower. Fresh from the gym. I mean, fresh from the gym. Uh huh. And like he would literally tell me, don't you take no shower. Like he would hit me up. Again, this was a piece. This was a this was several years ago. This was not recent. So please don't message me about Carlton. But this was years ago. And he would hit me up and be like, hey, what you doing? You know, you want to come through? And I'm like, well, I'm leaving the gym. This is how I first found out that he liked it a mm -hmm. little peppery. He liked a little salt, a little must. Mm -hmm. And so I would be at the gym and he would hit me. I'm like, well, I, I just came from the gym. I'm about to go home. I need to go home and shower. He said, uh-uh, don't you go home. He said, come just like that, baby. I would put this dick in his mouth. Excuse me. I'm sorry. We're talking honestly. He he would he would go, he would go crazy. He would eat it up. He would. And he liked it. Now everybody, now everybody didn't like it like that. Now I like you fresh out the shower because okay. I wanna, you know, I wanna do all of the things. Now this is that you're making me uncomfortable, Craig. Am I? Yes, like we can't, like, geez. Well, I'm just trying to have an honest conversation. I know, but so, look, I was doing, I was going, I was prepared. Uh, is that why you twisting okay. this piece of string? Yes, <laughs> he got this little piece of string on his hand and he just twisting it. I'm like, <laughs> edging it with the string. God, I'm like, now you making me. Now you're making me a couple. Okay, well, let me just say this last thing. Say the last thing. Okay, so the last thing is I like it fresh mm -hmm. from the shop. Because I but it's nothing wrong with Ooh, okay. What I happened? Don't, I don't know. But I do like sometimes like when you just come straight home from work or whatever, when you just jump right into it. Not mm -hmm. necessarily having doing anything oral, mm -hmm. but like it's something really nice and special about just jumping right into it. You know what I'm saying? After a person been working all day. Okay, I hear you. You know, like it doesn't always have to be right out of the shower, unless, of course, it's oral. Like, I don't want it, you know. I hear what you're saying, Chris. That's it. <laughs> so, we brought, we've assembled a panel yes. of men and women and um, of all sexual persuasions, mm -hmm. if you will. And we wanted to hear what you guys have to say. Like, what do you guys think? And, you know, your perspective. On all of this. Okay, but well, so now that now that we know that you don't, that's not your thing. Your thing, or well, it might still be a thing. What's not my thing? Be a peppery. So so, how do you prepare for sex, Craig? I just got to have a nice good shower. Okay. And get in all of the crevices. Gotcha. Situate my situation. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I like spontaneity too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I don't necessarily feel like. I don't necessarily feel like you always got to prep. Gotcha. So wait. Sometimes you. Sometimes I just want to roll over and get to it. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not saying so, I mean, so wait, but also with that being said, with that being said, are you okay with any consequences that may happen if you didn't give them a chance to prep? 
Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. And, and I don't have a fetish where I want to see that. Gotcha. But you know, I don't mind if you know a little something on the tip. Yeah. <laughs> it made me feel like I really got the work. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they are down in the. In the look, oh, they got their. Oh, they got their far enough. But I know, but because I think about it, which I think which was part of our bottom shaming conversation. Exactly. But it's the thing is, is that when you talk to women, and then once, once I'm gonna say this thing, we're gonna bring our panel up. Mm -hmm. But when you talk to women mm -hmm. that have anal sex with their husbands, they never prep. They never prep. And the men are like, oh, I mean, it's your ass. That's what happens. That's but then but gay men does not that is like that is because I and, and, and to your point. It's just like I'm not gonna, especially if I'm with somebody I love, somebody mm -hmm. I'm with. Like I'm not gonna shame you and be like, what, what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you with somebody and you're having sex, sex on a regular basis, it's bound to happen. It's an ass, okay? Mm -hmm. For God's sake, it ain't a pussy. So you know, hey, but they make a mess too, ladies. We'll talk to y'all about that. <laughs> Amber in the comments, she she says she probably asked for anal sex. But I know a lot of women who enjoy anal play mm. or anal sex, and they never. And I'm like, "Well, did you prep?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, "Well, no, you just shit it all on that man's dick." <laughs> who we bring it up first, Craig? <laughs> now let's start right here. Okay, that's exactly where I wanted to go. All right, so we're gonna start with um, "I Am Goddess." Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> <laughs> This is my girl. She's watching from Bali. Oh my! You're all the way in Bali. She's in Indonesia. Yes, yes, yes. Can y'all hear me clearly? Like, do I sound like a robot over here? Because the no, 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 you I'm sound fine. You sound absolutely fine, baby. I had no idea that I was gonna be over here rolling the way that I am, Craig. You are <laughs> nuts. You are freaking nuts. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. My my thing is this. I don't want to be laying down with no man who ain't fresh. I don't want to smell no balls. I don't want to go up under the balls and get a whiff of the booty. I don't want any of that. That's just automatic turn off for me. That's like, mm -hmm. that's a deal breaker for me. But I'm the same way. Like I am obsessive when it comes to cleaning when it comes to douching when it comes to i i'm like i'm all about the aroma okay <laughs> but i did have a situation where i came from the gym and dude like ravishly tore down my workout pants and i was like no 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 let me go shower and he was like no you don't need to shower and now it kind of turned me on. I know it did. <laughs> that he was all about the must. Because I know I was not fresh that day. I know I wasn't fresh. But mm -hmm. so I, I, I don't know. I wasn't even planning on going here. I was thinking more on the mental level. I well, thinking, we'll come to that in a second. Well, yeah. I, I just wanted to add to what you just said. So, like, <laughs> so like with the with the, with the little piece that I used to have. And see, the thing for me is, I typically will shower before I go to the gym because I shower at night before I go to bed. And then I'm one of those people that I got to shower in the morning too because you do sweat slightly when right. you're sleeping. You know what I'm saying? So I'll usually s shower again in the morning. So I would mm -hmm. shower before I go to the gym. So even if I did sweat a lot. I might have a little must down there, but it wasn't completely rank. You understand what I'm saying? So he wasn't getting three day worth of right, right, right. foam. Now see, now she, now she over here want to be on some spiritual stuff, and you over here being a freakily. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with that being said, so when, you, so when it's because the thing is, sex is a a transfer of energies, a tra you know, it's mm -hmm. bodies, it's. Is energy mixing together? So how do you prepare for that? Okay. So for me, if I'm coming to someone's house, if I'm mm -hmm. coming to your house, then I'm planning on, mm -hmm. I'm planning on fucking. I'm just planning on fucking. Oh. So I've already washed. I've already done the whole booty crack. You know, I got my wipes in my bag. You know what I'm saying? So when it's getting ready to go down, it's like, Excuse me, babe. I gotta go to the bathroom for a minute. And I say, 
my wipes and I do a refresher. You know, and um, because you just sat in the car and went over there and you might got a little, you know. Right, right. It might be a hundred degree day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I might even do a little whole bath in your sink. So, you know, that's how I prepare. Yes, yeah. that's, mm. that's just me. Okay. I don't want to be smelling, and I don't want to smell nothing. It's right. So, up. so when so the, the act of sex in general. Now, is that something you can just do with anybody, or do you have to be in a mental space with them to be able to have sex? You know what? I've never been the type of individual to be able to have a one night stand. That's just not something that I can do because. Like you said, it's a transfer of energy, and I'm a real big energy person, so mm -hmm. I don't want to share that or transfer any of that to just anybody. I have to have a connection with you, and okay. you have to be able to fuck me mentally before mm. I even consider the idea of laying down and sleeping with you. So that's just me personally. I, I can't, you can't call me up and be like, um. You know, I was thinking uh, maybe we could, uh-uh, we're not doing no Netflix and chill. I'm just not that type of person. I have to have some sort of connection. You have to stimulate me mentally. You have to be worldly. You have to educate me. You have to wine me. You have to dine me. And then I have to kind of feel you out to see if I if you've earned it. enough. Huh? Mm -hmm. If you've yeah. earned it. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So it is so interesting. It, it takes a lot for you. It, and it's interesting that you say that because I do believe in the transferring of energy. And once I under when I, once I truly understood that, mm -hmm. that was when I stopped getting into like pieces and dates and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I really did. But it was it was it took some maturity because what I will share with you is when I came into this community, and I don't say this lifestyle, but when I came into this community, I had all those values that you were talking about right now. Like I could. I couldn't even jack off with you if I didn't think it was going to materialize into something. Mm -hmm. But then, and I'm not blaming this on the gay community, but sometimes your surroundings start to um, impact how you think and how you move and how you feel. Mm -hmm. And so because I knew a bunch of people that were okay with casual sex and, you know, the little one night stand here and there, I became okay with it. So it was almost like I abandoned some of my morals and values that I came into this community with. But I had to find that again. And once I found it again, I, I was back at that same thing that you're talking about now. Like, it was like, I can't just lay with you just because, you know, I'm horny. You know, like, and I've gone through periods where I was celibate for a period of time. And I think if people really understand that, especially people who keep saying, ladies and guys that say, I, I really want to find my person, I want to find my partner, you got to clear out that space, that exactly. energy. Or you got all these dates and pieces that you fucking, you got to move all of that out the way mm -hmm. for somebody of substance to really come through. Now, can I, ask, can I ask you a question? Now, how old are you, darling? I am 50 years old. Girl, they, yes, ma'am. Girl. They are loving you in these comments. I don't yes, know if you see them. girl. I don't know if you see them comments, but they are eating you up. They, look, look, look. You might not be down with casual sex, but a few of these people done ate you out and they done fucked you sitting right here. Now, you and Bali. Thank you, you. I can't see the comments. Oh, okay. Now, are you and Bali alone or are you and Bali with company? No, I'm I'm completely alone. And that's another thing. That's another thing. I think that goes along with sex as well. You got to be able to be by yourself and love yourself because a lot of times we'll lay down with people trying to look for love in all the wrong spaces and thinking that sex is going to fill that void that we're missing within ourselves. So mm -hmm. no, I'm over here enjoying myself. I know what I like. I buy myself flowers, I masturbate, I have my favorite toys. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. when I do find a partner, it will just be an added bonus to what I already got going on with me. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah oh. I buy myself, Derek. Yeah. All right. So girl, girl, you gave me this. You she just gave me all type of life. Right I now. know. <laughs> so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna drop you down to the drop you down. We're gonna bring you back up at the end for a roundabout. Thank you so much, darling.
Yeah. I was so glad. I was so glad when I saw your email come through, you know, that you wanted to be on this panel. I said, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna bring you back up at the end, okay, babe? Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> mm. That that's that good black. Oh, good honey, that black is gonna crack her. Okay, and her skin all gold. Ain't it golden? Listen, one day she came on my live. She had just got out the shower. She ain't had nothing but a towel on. <laughs> I said, well, girl, who are you trying to <laughs> Told you what you be over here doing. <laughs> ah, so okay. let's start. Well, that's not start. Let's go here next. Marvelous one. Oh, hey, what's going on? <laughs> hey there. How y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm all right. Yourself? Was something falling? No, I have my TV up here too. So I'm looking. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, I was like <laughs> where are you watching from? I'm watching from Staten Island, New York, aka New York City. Okay. 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 All right. So, why do you want to be a part of this conversation? Um, just the whole. I like the conversation of getting ready for sex because I've always, not always, but when you're con conversing with folks and trying to figure out, especially verse, top and bottom, all that jazz. I'm like, listen. Especially since I like to host, I'm like, I like to give bottoms that's not used to bottom or whatever, like key little situations or whatever. I'm verse, so I do it all. So. I like to be able to help out who I can when it comes to the pleasures of the bedroom, especially since Miss Derek is kind of nervous about it. So I like to be able to help you out a little bit. Oh, child, honey, go on over there and let uh, marvelous. Uh, <laughs> that, that that guy right there. That's my sister. Don't do all that. <laughs> Don't you? Oh, do that. Okay. You see, you see, great messy. It's <laughs> so messy. <laughs> Wait, marvelous one. I was going to ask you to explain to the people watching what do you mean when you say you host? We know what you mean, but there's some people oh, that probably okay. Hosts is when people come to my house. I don't, I rarely go to somebody else's house because I work in hospitality, so I know I just know what I want when I go to somebody's house. So if a bottom comes to my house, they got what they need. If a top comes to, to my house, they know what I have what they need. And just right. I'm a good host, I offer drinks, I offer I, like. I want that when I go to somebody's house. And a lot of people, especially in New York, it's like, girl, can I get some water? <laughs> can I get a towel to wipe myself off with, please? Hello. So, like, and no shade, New York. No, no shade, no shade. So, like, I'm not I'm not a New Yorker, New Yorker. I'm going to be wet. But maybe that's just why I have that kind of common sense when it comes to that. So I don't know. <laughs> no, because I, I have a lot of New York friends that, you know, it's New York is a very expensive place. It is. Hey, it stop. Is. Don't you start it that. Is. Um, so so your verse. Yes. So you have so you so when it's so when it's time to have sex, do you prepare everything just in well, case it, you establish I'm, I'm, okay? So first of all, I'm single. So therefore, as Ms. Gatto was saying. I have the energy, so I'm okay. I have enough energy, so I'm, I know about the transfer of the energy and all that nature. So when it comes to, I, I do like to sing, mingle. <laughs> I mingle. <laughs> so therefore, it just depends on who's coming over. I mean, if I know I'm meeting up with the verse, then of course, I'm going to prepare everything. But if I'm meeting up with the top, I'm going to do what I need to do for the bottom. If I'm meeting up with the bottom, I'm going to do what I need to do to be the top. And there's mm -hmm. just and since I'm I'm very high maintenance when it comes to all that, so I take it to a whole other level. So you're high maintenance when it comes to what? Just hygiene and preparations and all that. So well, that's what like, we're talking about. So what's the, what's the what's the whole other level? Whole other level. Just, whole other level. Yeah, you got to talk to us, chat. So you because we, sh Craig, we were talking about uh, I think a few videos ago preparing for this. You were talking about trimming and grooming and shaving and things of that nature. If you're a bottom. Don't be coming to somebody's house and you you have a hair growing in and you scrape it up my dick. That's just that ain't how that works. And if you were talking, you grooming your dick. I don't want your pubes chafing up my booty cheeks. Like I already did exfoliation in the shower. I don't need your pubes doing all that on my on my. Uh, uh, uh. That's a lot of work. And then if you're shaving this when you give a head, you that that, that chafes the dick. And they think you're using your teeth. But like no, I'm not using my teeth. That's just my beard. We'll shave that beard up and trim that up nicely, and neatly. That's how I feel when it comes to that. So it's just like, I'm high maintenance when it comes to all that. Now, have you ever had an instance where, especially since you said your verse, have you ever had an instance where maybe the top or the bottom wasn't fresh? Because there was something that I Am Goddess said earlier. 
She said when she going down, if she sucking dick, she don't want to smell no ass and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a homegirl who told me one time she was sucking this guy's dick and, and she could smell his ass. It smelled like complete shit. And she was just well, that, that's that that's that that happens quite a bit, especially with the trade. And so it's like mm, that's a that's a difficult topic because I feel like we'll put up with what we want to put up with. So it's like you get that little cute little thing, whatever. You're like, okay, I smell a little sweaty balls. I I'll suck a little sweaty balls. Now <laughs> I'm hot. I'm happy because I know my friend over here getting a little anxious. I'm hot maintenance. So I'm not okay. they, not gonna smell no sweaty balls for me. But I can suck a little sweaty balls, a little rank ass or whatever. But I don't want no tissue balls in your booty cheeks. I just I want to be able to taste, as you said, water. Now me, I use toothpaste. So you gonna get me to do what down there below. So you wait, prep. Wait, wait, wait. So what you does the prep. toothpaste do? So you prep with your uh the enema, whatever. And sometimes you want to. I use toothpaste. Not not the same toothpaste you brush your teeth with. You go to the dollar oh. store and you get like a little toothpaste thing, a little travel size toothpaste. Get a little bit on your finger, rub it on your booty, and then you shower. That not, not that knocks out and cancels out all that shitty smell down there. So when you do get ready to get eaten up, eaten up, it works. It works. I'm telling you, it works. Now don't use the same toothpaste you brush your teeth with. Now that ain't that ain't hygienic. You get. Well, I'm gonna see. I see again. Communication is our partner. Clarity is our partner. You gonna have some people out here with crest. You gonna have some people with crest in their ass. Well, no, he said no. no. He said you can use crest, but just get your no, you small use it, crest. But, you the job, but not the same one you brush your teeth with. You go to the dollar oh, store. Oh, and get like so you are tube. using toothpaste. It's not the one you use you to brush, brush your teeth. teeth. Yes, yeah. but not the same tube that you're using to brush your teeth. Two separate tubes. See, learning the trick. Oh, you might want to share that with your partner. It, now you're not leaving a toothpaste on your ass. You still gonna hop your ass in the shower. Right, right. But that's some old New York shit. shit. I ain't never heard of that. That ain't no New York shit. That's just my shit. I told you I'm high maintenance. I'm a different level. <laughs> that's oh, a different okay, level. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but it's just I'm just I'm just high maintenance. It's just like I don't. You never gonna leave my house and have an accident and say you had an accident with me. So that's never gonna be the case. What's and interesting to me though is you know because again. I, I've I've had hookups before, and it's so. I would say you know I'm fresh, I'm ready to go, and mm -hmm. then you and then you, you get down in that in that neither region, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not so fresh. And I'm like, well, what kind of what kind of showers did you take? What kind of preparing, ma'am? But but at the same time, it's an asshole. So I mean, so. Yeah, but it, but it still ain't so you can, smell like you can, you can tell when somebody is showering when somebody ain't showering when somebody prepped absolutely. ain't showering. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I tend to get let the dog out. I'm listening. To <laughs> don't yeah, no, no, absolutely. But but there's definitely a difference. You know what I'm saying? Really and my thing difference. is, there are things that I'm willing to be okay with with someone that I have a rapport <laughs> with. I said exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But like, if you fresh off the street and we this is our first time. Going there, you need to be spotless. Period. I don't, I don't want to smell no odor. I guess you all right, Miss Dare. I'm not. I'm okay. I'm listening. I'm learning. Watch this now. Even though you've not had penetrative sex, yes. Is there anything that you require when you do what you do? Well, I don't do it often. But you gotta be clean. So, I don't like, I'm not a musty. So you don't like a little must down there? No, God, no. Oh, so, so have you ever been with somebody and there was a little must and you were like, um, mm. I'm going to make them take a shower. Because I have definitely told, I'm like, oh, you ain't right down there. I I mean, I don't say it like that. You probably do. No, no, no. I don't like that. <laughs> see, see, that's that, see, that's in New York. He said he said it just like that. But, like, but, like I, that. But, I, but, I, but I do agree with him with the fact that it depends on what you, who you're, who it, who you're dealing with, what type of man you're dealing with. Right. If you're dealing with a street nigga, a street nigga you know, then you, it's like you got to give them a pass for being funky in the ass. You don't give them no pass. No, but you, you, I mean, but you just know, you just understand what what's, what, you, what you're getting into. <laughs> what you're getting into. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, my, friend, my, my friend said, though, he brings them, he said, you know, he said, but you know, you bring them home, you give them a whole experience, you know. You give them a bath. I give them a you bath. Know. I put a little soap on my middle finger, and I go in that crack. He said he drop a little bleach in the water too. <laughs> oh no, I get in the shower with him, and I put. Well, you know, this is my former life. 
I talk about it in my first book. Well, lady, we here. I'm asking all these questions already. Like, where are you coming from? Like, don't come and mess in my bathroom up either. Like, no, <laughs> no, for, no, 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 for the New York children. Because if you didn't came from Brooklyn to Queens and you on the train, girl, your ass might be sick and it's a 90 degree day. <laughs> By the time you get to the house, you might need a fresher, a refresher. Exactly. A mess. <laughs> and Tomorrow, then I had to say something real quick. Miss Goddess yes. is uh, all essence of her name. Goddess. Down boots. Oh, yes, I love she her. Is. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> yeah, <she is. laughs> Marvis, we're going to drop you back down. We're going to bring you back up at the end. Okay, Down. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I'm learning. I'm learning today. Uh, yeah. Who did not know about the toothpaste trick? I had, I've never heard that. Now, I've heard some things in the gay community because, you know, like if you got bags under your eyes, you know what you what, what they do for that? A preparation? Yeah, yeah, the gays know that you put a little preparation. I've never done that. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful if you do it. So don't go slapping that shit on your eye and get in your eyes. It's going to fuck your eyes up. But the preparation H, of course, is for hemorrhoids. So it, it shrinks them up. Mm -hmm. So if you put, if you got bags under your eyes, you put a little bit under your eyes, it'll snatch those bags up. So I've heard that, but I've never heard that trick with. And Marvin said he had maintenance. <laughs> right. All right, well, we're going to go to our girl Shaniqua. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Hey, boy. Hey. Oh, my God. Marvis is marvelous. Okay. He going to have people's assholes on fire. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said with that Listerine dushing. Okay. <laughs> right. He said that's history. Woo, so. Jesus. Okay, I'll drink to that. <laughs> okay. Right. Where are you watching from, Shaniqua? I am from the DMV, Baltimore, baby. Ah. Woohoo. Oh, 21215. What's the zip code? It's 21001. 21001. Where is that? In, in the suburbs. So she's not really in Baltimore. She's giving she's giving done with the Atlanta teams. What what, what what city? What what suburb are you in? In Bel Air, Aberdeen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, 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 but I'm from the ATL. You were in that county. Okay. 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 So why, right. now, why do you want to be part of this conversation Ooh. now? Well, I thought I was going to educate somebody, but I'm being educated. Okay. Um, I guess I just wanted uh, to just tap yeah. in. It's mental yeah. for me, you know. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. I guess there's a difference between sex and intimacy. Okay. Yeah. And so if you just having sex, you just gotta have your bag of tricks. Okay. Yeah. So you know it just depends on what you're trying to do. If it's sex, then yeah, I'll lick your sweaty balls. I will. You know, because guess what? Sex is just sex, but intimacy mm -hmm. is totally different. So I guess one of the things that I do to prepare mentally is start in the morning. You know, I have the red light, green light system. So yeah. I start off with the yellow light. Okay. That means, okay, I might be feeling you. So at home, when you come and you see that green light up there, okay, that means go. Don't pass go. Don't take no shower. Just get in where you fit in. Okay. Uh -huh. You see? Uh -huh. Another thing that I do. <laughs> another you know, thing that I oh, go ahead. Go ahead is I make sure that my toys are all um, charged up because that's the worst thing in the world to get it going and your toy fail. So that's another thing that I do. Um, another thing is because, you know, like you say, um, straight men, they don't wash. So I make sure I have these because Girl, I don't want no shit in my fingernails. So you put that on your finger before you get the fingering? Yes. So let me ask you this. Have you had an experience with a man when you tried to finger him and he was like, oh, he moved your hand or he didn't like it? No, because mentally I prepare him because most people don't know that the men's G spot is in their anus. Yes, indeed. Okay. And so I prepare them by gently massaging outside below the balls, right in that G spot and have them shaking and shit. That's called the perineum. Yes. That that seam so, between the balls and the asshole. Yes. That's called the perineum. And so you suck on it, you lick on it, yes. you, it. you know, you, you get, get your, your cough little, drop, put it in your mouth, and then have you ever, get your little cream. 
you know, and you massage it and you gently touch it. And, you know, they're in there. Then you stick, stick, and stick. And then you gently slow, get the smallest plug. You know, that's the small one. I'm just, hey, y'all said we're going to be real. So I get the small oh. plug and it's real. So they don't know if it's my finger or the plug. And if they can take the small plug, then you go to the next plug. And then before you know it, they're plugged and they're shaking and they enjoy it. And I explained to them as a sex therapist that that's where your G spot is. You don't have to feel like you're gay Shame. or whatever, but yeah. because they do not clean and they do not dish, I make sure I have the necessary things because shit does come out and I don't want no shit underneath my fingernails. I know that's right. Know. That's nice. You know, you brought you you brought up two things, two really interesting things, and I've had this conversation so many times with some of my female friends, you know, who have called and asked me, "Well, do you think he's gay because he likes for me to play with his ass?" My thing is, and I've said this, and, and it's sometimes so hard having this conversation with some black people, not all, um, because some women, <laughs> some women, some black women just think, "I don't want no man who likes me to play in his ass." That does not an indication that he's gay. No. Just because he wants you to finger his ass, because like Shaniqua said, whether you gay or straight, a man's G spot is in his asshole. Mm -hmm. And so just That's because one of he the wants 12. Right. And just because he one wants a 12. One of the 12. And just because he wants a woman to play with his ass doesn't mean he wants to lay with me or Derek or another man. That's not right. the case. And so once they get over that that phobia then that's some of the best sex. I mean, not even sex. They can make some good love. That dick grow big because they're excited. It makes yeah. them. Yeah, it does. It's like some of the best ever. And so, yes, I want you to do me too because it feels great. I'm not. And when they and, and, and when they come with your finger in their ass. Yes, that's it. I mean, they're done for the coming, night. Look, like, yeah. like they said, like they said, narcotics and Keep coming back. Keep coming. Back. Yes. Yeah. For real. So my sister, my, my sister's watching tonight. Her name's Katira. She has no idea. She was like, girl, you must have that platinum poo. No, I got <laughs> either kind of poo. It ain't got nothing. But if you hit their G spots, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. That's no, it. Not, not, you say there's 12 G spots. Yes. So you said there. Like right between your legs. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on, Shaniqua. We can't hear you. But while we're waiting for that sound, can you guys still hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. While we're waiting for that sound to come back in, I will say this. Something that Shaniqua said made me think about um, the United States versus Billy Holiday. I don't know if you guys have seen that film yet. But it was really, really good. I watched it um, yesterday. But the point of me bringing it up is because she had been, Billie Holiday had been molested as a kid when mm -hmm. she was 10 years old. She was raised in a, in a whore house. Her mom was a whore. And um, she had always been fucked. She had never been made, no one had ever made love to her. And so something that you said, Shan Shaniqua, made me think of that. Um, when you say, yeah, I, I'll lick your, your sweaty balls because if it's just a fuck, it's just a fuck. And there was a moment in the film where she's with Trey Vonte, um, the guy who played in uh, Moonlight. There's a, he, he becomes her love interest. And she's, she's become accustomed to just fucking. Mm -hmm. But there's a moment where he says to her, no, we're not doing it like that this time. Yeah. And he made yeah. love to her. And it fucked her up because she just she had never yeah. been moved, caressed that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was and interesting. It's, and it's different, especially as a sex therapist. If you have been violated, you know, certain things you can't do. Because I like a little choking. You know, I like you to uh, smack. I do. I like you to beat me a little bit. But some people, they can't. Yes. Hit that. Okay, I like to smack people, a little ass. But some people can't do that because it, it shuts them down. So yeah. mm -hmm. you have to prepare mentally and you have to know what you're going to do. Are we just going to fuck? Because I want you to get in and get out so I can go to bed. Yeah. Are we going to make love? You know, so yeah. it just depends. And when I do tantric massages, we don't even penetrate. It's all about the connection. I mean, can you explain it, tantric it, massages for the people that are listening that may not know? So a tantric massage is where basically 
only one person is doing the touching. touching. So let's say me and Derek, all right? He would be as comfortable as he feels as far as clothing. Some people are naked. Some people have on underwear, okay? Right. And I would massage you like a normal massage. However, if you're, we're mostly on the floor. And so therefore, instead of just rubbing you, I would lay on you while I'm rubbing you. And mm -hmm. I would do it not in a deep, deep penetration, but just as a sensual so that you can feel. And um, a lot of my clients are men that have erectile dysfunction and they just want to get those feelings back. So it's all about feeling. It has nothing to do with sex. Uh, and you're not supposed to even end it with sex, but it's all about a connection. Right. So, a lot of times when couples have issues, um, I'll do couples tantric massage where they come together and they learn. So yeah, so. that's so, awesome. So before we got cut off, can you mm -hmm. where are some other places, some other G spot places on me? All right. So in the process oh, yeah, right. area, okay. you can do like milking inside of the growing area, um, mm -hmm. right when the growing touches, um, and you can massage that and it's it's almost like the um, what is it the, um, the sciatic nerve mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. right in between your growing right there where your hips and stuff connect if you push that gently and massage while you're sucking it grows you know what i like to do right there in that spot shaniqua i like to press my tongue real hard yes yes and my thing is is it is the best feeling ever. Yeah. yeah. And so that's one of the things with tantric massage. You get to know that person and you can feel and you can, the way they move and manipulate, you can tell where their spots is. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what do you, so, so what do you do? Oh, no, I know, I know, Shadika. We ain't talking about me today, girl. We were talking about y'all. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, you got to stay. Um, my mom, I've learned not to dish because dishing um, makes your chemical imbalance, your, your balance off your probiotics and your pH. So if you want to be fresh, ladies, I'm talking from a Georgia peach here, a girl raised in the South, eat some peaches, pineapples. You have to eat healthy and then it will come out fresh. Oh, you cut, you cut out a little bit for it. What is going on today? Mm -hmm. Hold on, Shaniqua. Hold on. The last thing we heard was eat some peaches. Hold, Hold on, on one second. Uh, what is happening today? Mm -hmm. Can you still hear us? I'm still. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. okay there we go. go ahead. Okay. So you said eat some peaches and then what? Pineapples. Um, Pineapples. Lemon water. Um, lemon so that water. your pH balance uh -huh. is okay. Instead of dishing, because that, um, for me, it makes my pH off balance, and then I'll have a yeast infection, and you don't want that. You don't want the milk. Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> okay. Whew. So then we're going to drop you down, because we got one more person to bring up, but we're going to bring you back up at the end, because everybody in the comments is, you are educating, and everybody- They love they, it. They yeah. love what you, they love what you got to say over here, so we're going to bring you right back up, okay, Dow? <laughs> oh, I'm learning today. I've learned some stuff too now. So you use a toothpaste trick? No. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave that to mom. <laughs> now, for those of you though that you don't know about the um the cough drop though, you get you a cough drop. I know about the cough drop. Put it in your mouth, get that menthol going, and you get the licking and sucking on that. It'll open it, and then you blow on it after you suck on it because it opened up the pores. Hey, cousin B. Hey, boy, hey. Hi. Hey. 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 I missed that one. Is that yeah. Good? Yeah. What's I'm going on? on? I'm well. How are you all? We are great. Good. Thank you. So you obviously... But well, well, I've seen you. You've been laughing the whole time. The entire there. time. You, you've been, so I saw you. you you've been... Hearing and understanding those going on, but why do you want to be part of this conversation? Okay, so first of all, because um, Derek, you just dressed. Let me put on. Let me get ready. All the way ready. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I mean, just so I can be ready, so I can be presentable. I, I just can't. Okay, I, okay, I'm good. I just, I just had to. <laughs> oh, but still. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> I first want to say um, once again, thank y'all for having me. Um, and um, I have learned so much just sitting here and soaking up the knowledge and um, recalling some of my own experiences um, and how even some of the things you all were saying about mentally preparing that process, the additional steps to pre preparation that, that far exceed the physical process. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm grateful to have just learned so much already, you know, um, from mm -hmm. sitting here listening. And one thing I will say as far as my own personal experiences and how I feel like I can relate to what is being said is uh, my first experience um, was when I first had moved here to Atlanta, which was March, actually in a few days, March 9th will be four years. And okay. so when I got here, yes, yes. And so when I got here, probably I moved in with my, who I didn't know he was, but with my gay cousin and his boyfriend. And so they really kind of just took me under their wing and they started teaching me different things and sharing different things with me, just as far as even me, just welcome, welcoming community. And so probably, you know, three months after that, it wasn't really that, I don't know if that's three months. Let me do it and see if I'm doing my math correct. Yeah, June. So June, I met a guy and um, um, at the time I was staying in the rooming house. And so he was literally the next room over. And mm -hmm. he, um, long story short, he knocked on my door, standing there in um, uh, nothing on but his drawers. And I'm like, nigga, who, what you think, what you come for? Excuse me, and, you know, because I, I, I never had the experience before. So I'm like, um, uh, what you thought uh, was going to happen? Like, I mean, he was ready. Did you let him in? Not, not that night, because I, honestly, and that was something. <laughs> Craig, I'm not going to do this with you. <laughs> 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 Go no, ahead. I didn't. I didn't because one, that's where I first realized about myself how I would say sensitive I am, or how some of those those values or those mores that you s spoke of earlier. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in a two parent home where you know, and growing up in church, and so what the doctrine about. Um, marriage and sex was um, as it relates to who you're sleeping with and who you're intimate with, who you're having sex with. Some of those morals were still um, very present in my mind at that moment. And so I was like, oh, he, I ain't finna do nothing with him. I ain't talk, we ain't talk. I don't know he's nothing, nothing about him. I'm not about just hopping no bed with him. You know, I was, you know, Proverbably doing all the neck rolling. I wasn't, you know, I didn't do all that in front of it was I was just stone cold face and just listening to him, you know, Barbara Walters, right. you know, interview eyes. Uh and so mm. um <laughs> so I but I didn't. I said, um, well, you know, after he told me about himself and who he was and that that one, that he was down low, and one, two, that he was significantly older than me, because at that time I was almost I was I was 25 and he was almost 52. Oh. So um you know, so me, that was one thing too. I was like, ooh, like uh, okay, I guess if we do this, I'm gonna be, you know, um going to town with grandpa. But um he he was fine and he was he looked good. So I mean, I don't I don't know if I might I might not mind on this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But long story short, no, go ahead. Okay, so cousin Ben, because you because I see you you talk like to Craig talk, honey. You just go off on a tangent. Um, what? So the question is for you. 
How do you get ready for sex, cousin Ben? Okay, well, kind of to to segue from that story from the first time mm-hmm. when I when we first the first time we had sex, we because I did end up we did end up you know doing the um, downtown boogie, um, and mm-hmm. so um, but and I was I was on top. And it was my first experience, so I never, I didn't have any clue about really what to do, but that was what he wanted. So, mm-hmm. so the first time, literally, we got going and you know, got the wrestling, and he, it, we were only like a few minutes in, and next thing I know, I'm like, uh, I can't even explain to you what the horror that attacked my nostrils. Um, Cause it was an attack. Um, um, I didn't press charges, but it was an attack. Um, so long story short, I, and me, my ego got involved. So I was like, no, nah, you know, let's just keep going. Nah, let's just, you know, spray something in the room, keep going. Even though it stunk, I was like, no, listen, you know, I'm, I'm excited. This is my first time. I don't want to, the moment to stop some, but still, I'm like, like, this smells absolutely horrendous. So, after that, you know, and, you know, we, we had a, you know, about a three week, you know, rendezvous every other day after that, you know, but it's, that's neither here nor there. Um, um, Fast forward to probably about press balls. Press balls. <laughs> Child, you still even answer the damn question. We asked you how you how prepare. do you prepare for sex? Are you, are you talking about something? No, that's what I, that's what I was getting to. That's what I was getting to because um, <laughs> that moment I had not prepared. Though that moment taught me about preparation and, and how to. Oh, from what I felt about that moment when when last year when I was in the experience where um um I'll just fast skip some other moments, but last year. Because June of last year, that was the, the last time I had actually been yeah, close yeah, to being yeah. intimate we with someone. We need some cliff notes, honey. Because you, you can tell me. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. What I did was, for me, um, uh, when I, me and, it was, uh, me and the guy, we thought we were going to go there. I I right. was wanting to try the experience of being a bottom, so uh-huh. um, and that was what he wanted. So I I felt like I was willing to go there with him, and so mm-hmm. what I did was I had bought went to um what's the place I don't want to call a lot of names, but um um it's you know one of the famous spots in Atlanta you know sex shops, but um I got stuff for an enema. I got you know. Uh, condoms and different things just to make sure I was ready and I, I made sure I cleaned that toot. I mean, it was so, you know, so fresh and so clean, clean, you know, uh, Andre 3000, Outcast, you know, I, because that, that experience scarred me mentally. Like, I was like, mm-hmm. oh no, you won't be no uh, snicker ball effect coming from me. <laughs> so uh, we were having a chocolate cup of peanuts over here, you know. Uh, so I that was how I I learned, you know, just speaking about all the other experiences, I learned from a bad experience, quote unquote, for me to mm-hmm. what I wanted to do and what how I wanted to make sure I was prepared for that experience, even though long story short, I'm mad about it because we didn't end up doing nothing. And as far as the thing about being prepared all day. I went all day, you know, didn't eat anything. You know, I went to the bathroom and, oh, I was hot to my hot. But the point of it is that that was how I prepared and I was more conscientious of how I felt about the moment when someone had not prepared for me. I felt like someone had not prepared for me to where that made me Feel like I wanted to make sure I was prepared for another person, so that was that's been my experience of the few times, you know. Um, long story long at this point, you know. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't you say long story short, no more damn time. 
Ben, girl, you didn't take <laughs> Ben, you didn't take me out today, baby. <laughs> Look, normally they hate to, they hate to see they hate to see you run commercial. They begging for commercials now. Ben, you didn't take us out, Ben. So, <laughs> baby, so let me just so wait, so let me just I'm just I'm just I'm about to round you up. Oh, so God. basically, the man, the fifty-two-year-old man, has stinky ass, which makes sure, which made you understand what you need to do for yourself when it's time for you to buy them. And that's why, so that now you make sure that you was clean when it was time for you. See how you see how I did that in about three seconds. Girl, it took you about it took you fifteen minutes to tell the story. But you know, but I was thinking that you got, you got it. don't do me like that, though. <laughs> Child, ooh, okay. So, Ben, we're going to click you down, Ben. We may not bring you back for the round of my because you said enough here. So, Ben, we're going to click you okay, down. Don't, 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 don't you act like that now. Don't you act like that now. If I, get you get started, if I ask you a question to get your ass started again, you may not stop. We'll be here at 1030. <laughs> so, so, let me click you back down. So, we're going to click, 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 down, child. <laughs> Woo. Oh my God! That thing needed somebody to talk to. Because <laughs> we had a story to tell, honey, that you was gonna listen. Long that, story short, sure. this quarantine and did him in. <laughs> he had to get some things off his chest. Long story short, <laughs> somebody said this is the longest story short ever. <laughs> y'all are terrible in these comments. Listen. Not only do y'all e- <laughs> not only do y'all fry us up in, in when y'all email us, but y'all fry these people up in the comments. Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Y'all something else. <laughs> when I say y'all something else, y'all are something else. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Get your bearings, right? <laughs> Jesus, but I enjoy because of because of me, I enjoyed the story. I did too. It was just. Uh, you went all the way around the black girl. He gave you, us details. D- d- full details. I can see what color the man had on. He had on jeans. I thought that she was going to sleep with the cousin's boyfriend. I didn't wait. The cousin, the boyfriend, he was in the cousin's house with the boyfriend. I thought that was about to happen. I was like, well, ooh. Right. This, this is a good story. But then next thing you know, some 15 year old. And I thought he was staying with the cousin and the boyfriend. And next then thing I know, he next thing I know, he in a room in the house. house. So we, but thank God he went back. He didn't tell us when he moved. Thank God he didn't tell us when he moved. But we was listening, cousin Ben. We was listening. We know, know the story. Oh, now I am goddess. I see you down there taking a little bite. Can we bring you back up, baby? <laughs> okay, so Bree, let's see, she ready? I am down there taking a little bite. Can we bring you back up, baby? Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, so turn, turn down your um, turn down what you listen to us on because we get an echo. Okay, hold on. Let me t- let me turn down my sound. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been li- you've been listening to you've been listening to all the people, uh, all the panelists that was here, and you know, we like to just run about to kind of give us uh, your final thoughts when it comes down to a woman getting ready to have sex, especially because you are a woman of a certain age, and so you've been you've been through. You've been through the, the, the goods, the bads, the ugly. So what is for these young women getting ready to come out there and have sex and, and be able to exchange your energy with someone? What advice would you give them? My advice is really just be okay with you. The sex is a bonus. Be okay loving yourself. That's what it boils down to. It boils down mm-hmm. to self-love. Um, because there were so many times, you guys, that I did not prepare mentally because mm. of all the childhood stuff and all the childhood trauma. I carried that into bed with me. And I couldn't really even enjoy sex enough to have a voice to say, hey, no, nah, put my leg down. That hurt. Or that doesn't feel good. <laughs> or I don't want to do it that way. I, I don't like it in that position because of all the stuff on the inside that I had healed and then mm-hmm. I call myself getting in the bed with somebody and I'm carrying that energy too so really mm-hmm. it was me pleasing the partner rather than pleasing myself so mm-hmm. my advice would be 
ladies, I mean, damn, you could be you could be a bad motherfucker in the bed with somebody if you feel good about yourself. Period. Mm-hmm. If you love yeah. yourself, period, you got to be okay with you before you take any of your stuff to the bed with somebody else. So the preparation actually starts before you even find a partner, before yeah. you even find out what you do like. You got to like you. So that's my yeah. advice. That was big. That is. So, and I want to ask you a question that Shaniqua brought up, a question that I want to ask you a question from a, a thing that Shaniqua brought up, is that between the sex and the intimacy part. Now, because you do take time to have sex, is your sex always intimacy? If, if, I, if I'm asking that right. Mm-hmm. So do, do you, because you said you, you're not a one night stand type of girl. So when you decide to do it, is it always an intimate, is it an intimacy moment with you? Or is it sometimes still just sex? Well, for me, it has to start off at least with the intimacy. Mm-hmm. I think if that is kind of the gateway to whether or not I trust you or not to maybe have anal. I've never had anal before, but Mm -hmm. I'm not against it. I'm not opposed to it, but I have Mm -hmm. to be able to trust you. I have to be able to, you know, uh, have you understand me and be gentle with me before I even go there. So Mm -hmm. for me, yeah, I've been fucked before and I like to be fucked, but I like to build that intimacy before Mm -hmm. I go there. Yes. I get that because there's a distinction because sometimes when you when you're with that person that you trust, sometimes it is making love and sometimes you just want to fuck. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get but that. But I don't want just anybody fucking me because I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially right. if it ain't a good fuck. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. It has I to start that. with the intimacy for me, Derek. But I'm got. I am got. I I love you. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, and I, I appreciate you being here with us. You know, showing us, you know, y'all didn't get to see, see, y'all seeing her from the neck up. We got to see you walk away. And I was like, well, damn, this lady is fine. I, this, I was like, now you know what? Because she works out. And I, everybody- I was like, now, wait a minute. Now, now, I don't like no women. I said, well, this is a fine woman over here, honey. So I just want to say thank you for gracious with your presence, with your beauty, and mm-hmm. with your knowledge today, all the way from Bali. What time is it there? It is it is eleven oh seven here in Bali in the, in the morning. In the morning. Wow. Yeah. Well, yes, I, I want to say I would say thank you for being a part of this, and, and I learned so much from you. And you know, just you. Well, thank here, you baby. guys. I really appreciate well, you having me here on your platform, and Craig. That's one of the reasons why I follow you. And now, Derek, I'm following you. Derek, I love y'all dynamic together. You are so, <laughs> you're so like, you so like, girl, no, uh-uh, h- hold up. No, <laughs> you'll talk to Craig in a minute. But I follow you, Craig, because we have the same belief systems as far as caring for oneself, self-care, yeah. you know. Yes. Um, um, and we're all on our own journey. So yes. you carried me through this whole pandemic since the beginning. Wow. I've been watching you. Uh, wow. I've been here for a year now, and I've been watching you for a year. So I appreciate everything that you guys bring to the forefront as well, because I'm learning as well. You know, so well, thank, thank you. you so much. I, I have fun. Thank you. you know, one last thing. I don't know why you're in. Are you there for work? No, I'm here for it's. It's just a part of the the process of me loving me and and you yeah. know being on my own spiritual journey. So yes, yes. I just wound up here in Bali, and um, okay. yeah. But I'll be coming back to Atlanta soon. I hope. Can I can I share my my handles for people to follow me? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. If you guys are interested in. Um, learning more about self-love and self-care and you know um this whole spiritual thing that i'm doing Mm -hmm. if you're interested in following my journey you can do so at instagram i am goddess one the number one and i'm here on youtube as well i am goddess tv so yes i welcome you and if you have any questions if you have any concerns if you have anything you want to share with me i'm open to that as well so thank you guys Thank you, baby. Bye. Bye.
Who you want to go to? Oh, we'll, 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 child. I see Ben still down there, child. I don't know if Ben, we're we going to come up pop. We're going to say Ben for last, child. But girl, you might want to get him now <laughs> while we got other people waiting. Because <laughs> then we can usher Ben out. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of marvelous. <laughs> ben, we just play with you, you know. I, I meet yourself, babe. Mar Marvel's over there falling out. Right. Oh, y'all are too much. Um, <laughs> I appreciate y'all for having this conversation. And all y'all conversations and topics are just amazing. And I just wanted to join into one that that's familiar with me. And this was fun. Y'all are a fool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you for being here. Thank you for being here. So for our, for our young um, gay man that like we said, like, we're crazy. Hey, wait a minute. Who thought I was gay? Wait a minute. No, I'm kidding. I'm gay as all. <laughs> I got look back to who the hell you talking to? <laughs> I had to look back to shit. <laughs> uh, somebody else in the room? <laughs> hey, baby. Uh, but for, uh, for a young gay guy that may that may come across this, come across this live, you know, and he's want to try sex for the first time and want to be like what advice would you give him from since you do both from a top end my perspective well i would definitely because i was looking at the comments douching is very important at the same time we are not douching because we are constipated so with that fluid that comes in that bottle you do not need to use that whole fluid because that that is that fucks up our insides as well and especially if you plan on doing it right if you're doing it right before sex that makes it a little bit more uncomfortable. That chemical does make the insides of you a little bit more on the raw side, if, if, you know, if you know what I mean, as far as just sensitive. It makes it a lot more sensitive. So you want to take at least most of that fluid out of that bottle and use your warm water or cold water to flush that out. You don't need that chemical. It's for people that are constipated and that has problems using the bathroom. Of course, they have those bottles um, on the website that you can refill your stuff, but when you don't, when you're young and stuff of that nature, and you are just enter, enter, entering sexual for the first time or whatever, you want you can go, you can easily access those your CVSs and Walgreens. But that that solution is not good just to be using on a regular basis to be cleaning your asshole out. That's what I will say. Mm -hmm. And the toothpaste is not a necessity. Like I said, I'm a different kind of person. At the same time, you're not just you're not letting the toothpaste sit like nair and just you're just putting it just to get rid of that smell. <laughs> you hop in the shower. You're not He's using like, like, like some no. lotion or whatever. No, because no, you did say so, and also be here because you like you said, with clarity is our partner. Communication is our partner. Clarity, clarity is our friend. friend. So we, you said dush, but we're talking about using the fleet. Man, man, should be doing no dush. Well, yes, that's yeah. Sorry, well, because I was looking at the comment, people were saying douching in the back, but yes, fleet, fleet. Fleet is the brand. Enema is what you're looking for. So don't yeah, 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 yeah. Is the brand. Enema is what you, you don't want to use that enema saline solution as just a regular thing to clean out your booty because that's that's not good. We're not we're not constipated. At least for the most part, you're not constipated. But mm -hmm. like as you guys were mentioning earlier, some people prepare the whole day. But if you're getting to like a last minute call, you want to probably use a little bit of that saline solution just to. A last minute call. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, come on, don't act brand new. But yeah. <laughs> <Marvelous>. <laughs> but, uh, thank you, marvelous. And and thank, thank you for the Thank you. Thank we appreciate you. you. Have a great night. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cousin Ben. Before we bring you up, you got sixty seconds to say whatever you got to say. Okay, you with me? Move, move out the way. Nod your head, yes, so you that you understand what I'm saying to you. Okay. <laughs> hey, cousin Ben, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I am going to keep you within your time period. Um, um, I do want to address just one thing. Um, I'm, yes. I'm grateful for y'all having me. And oh, yes, I saw somebody comment, um, was I nervous? I'm very nervous. And I'm grateful I because I always invite you. I, no, but I would say this, I, well, I'm grateful for this platform because I did feel like it took me a long time to become confident in myself because I felt like 
um, when I was younger, I didn't have the spaces to express myself. So I'm still currently working through those emotional issues and all those different things. So long story, really short for real. Um, I think I thank y'all for having me. Um, I'm grateful for this platform and what y'all are doing um, just by offering all these different perspectives uh, for us to learn and grow and um, grow from. And so I, I'm just thankful for y'all. Um, once again, thank you for having me. Okay, now I'm about, to, I'm about to ask you a question, and I just need you to answer the question. Okay, I got you. for uh, for a young man that may be watching this, and we heard your experience. But what advice did you give them for their first time having sex? I would say, hey, if there's anything you're not sure about, lay down your pride that would inhibit you from asking someone advice about what to do. If you feel like you need advice to prepare, lay down your mm -hmm. ego to the side and lay your pride to, uh, to the side and make yourself vulnerable. Allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to reach out and ask for help because that was what I will say is that was the difference between my first time and my last experience. The last experience I had, I when I knew I was ready for that, I called my best friend and I said, hey, I don't know what to do to get ready. Do you know what to do? Um, and he, he didn't know because he was more on the other. He said, no, look, I'm, I, I'm used to talking. I, I can't tell you about that. Let me put my roommate on the phone. He could tell you X, Y, Z about what to do and how to prepare yourself. So that's what I would say. Um, seek counsel. If, if you feel like you just don't know, that's why I appreciate you all and how you, what you all, y'all are a part of my village. Um, and I appreciate you all because I get so much counsel and wis wisdom just from watching sometimes these videos and these lives. So I, that's what I would say. Um, seek counsel and wisdom. And yeah. thank you to, I would say thank you to all the other people who um, left us great nuggets because I learned so much from Marvelous and um, Goddess and the other lady Shaniqua. I learned so much um, from each one of you each one of them tonight that I tips that I can take and use in my life. And so um, once again, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, cousin Ben. Thank you, cousin Ben. <laughs> See, look, cousin Ben got it right together. He sure did. He gave good information. He said, fuck you, ho. <laughs> <laughs> he said, fuck you, ho. I'm going to say what I got to say. Wait, but well, you know what you, well, what he did say was very good information. Uh huh. See console. Don't like you. Yeah. Like, don't, don't just go up and ready to do it. You know, I, mean, I talk to my friends about it all the time. That's why I know I don't feel like doing all that. <laughs> Not just be fucking. Right, right. You know, when I finally find someone that I want to share that part of me with, right. then yes, I would take, but not just to be out there just to go to the club on Friday night. I'm not gonna go through all that. You crazy. It's too much work. Uh <laughs> let's bring up Shaniqua. Okay. And we're gonna Shaniqua to, to round it out for us. Take your mute off. You mute. Hit it. Hit it one more time. Hit it twice. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. There we go. So Shaniqua, you heard all. You heard all the conversations and everything that cousin Ben said. Everything that you heard. Everything cousin Ben had to say. So what? What? What information would you give to round it out for just women? Well, just just being. Just being intimate and having sex, just in general, what, how would you round this conversation off? Um, well, like um, I Am Goddess said, love yourself first. You know, you have to be able to love yourself, be comfortable with who you are. Uh, because if you're not comfortable, whether you're big, small, or whatever, you're not going to be able to enjoy it because you're thinking about your own, uh, um, um, your own issues. Um, mm -hmm. And like Ben said, seek wise counsel. That's what the word says. Seek wise counsel. Someone who's done that before, especially um, someone that's a virgin, you know, because I was just told don't do it. So I did it. Mm -hmm. And the first time I got pregnant, that's why I got Tyrone. OK, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yeah, Tyrone. <laughs> so Come make on, sure Tyrone. you uh, use protection. You know, if it's your first time, use protection because my thing is, is that we're still in a day and age where there are things um, and you have to love yourself. And even like Tyrone's dad would say, oh, you can't get pregnant on the first time. Uh, I'm here to mm -hmm. tell you, you can't. 
okay? And the other thing for women um, who are not being satisfied, because a lot of women come to me when they're not being satisfied, is because you go with the status quo. You just get into the routine, okay? So therefore, you have to try some things. And um, I do want to encourage, you know, some of the women to talk about anal sex with their with their spouses, you know, mm-hmm. educate them on the different G spots, the nipples, the perineum, you know, um, it's like the glute muscle, like right in the, the sacrum at the back, your nipples, mm-hmm. suck your thumbs. You never know when you suck a thumb, it um, emulates that sucking of the penis. Suck the thumb and stroke your penis. There's different things that you can do to make your bedroom life better. So um, I would just say prepare mentally, um, if you have to even prepare your spouse, use the red light, green light situation that I gave. You know, if you're feeling it, text them a green light. They know it's on because sometimes mm. you just have to come and you want to like sometimes I'm standing there washing dishes and I wear dresses all the time. He just mm. pulled it and bang, 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 bang and roll out. And I'm like, woo. And sometimes you want to do that. But then sometimes, like I say, you have to prepare the mood. You know, you have to bring out your toys. You have to do those things. So just mentally um, be prepared and love yourself. That's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, then how can, and how can we get in touch with you, Shaniqua? Because they're asking for your social media. I don't have a social media. Oh, okay. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, you that girl. I am that girl. If you know, you know. And if you don't, yeah. get to know. And my thing is, is that um, because I am really busy, um, and I do a lot of coaching and teaching. Um, I do a lot of live things and a lot of interaction. So I'm not the social media, but I, I love Craig. I love Craig. So I just started following. And my thing is, all the topics are so very good. And one of the topics for me was when you guys did the parents of the LGBT. Because yeah. mm-hmm. my daughter, she's 11. She has been traumatized by um my relationship with her father her seeing her sister's relationship with her boyfriend and so mom um i like girls i said okay that's fine you know but i want you to really know that you like girls and because i was a pastor's wife you know that look the freaky little pastor wife the pastor's like this too okay i'm just saying um come on pastor okay preach my thing is that um <laughs> Um, I wanted to be able to share with her. And so we watch you together. And she, when I say she loves it. um, And Mm -hmm. so it helps. It really helped me to understand. And even though I was open because my sister um, is married to, um, she has a wife, um, Mm -hmm. very open. It's different when it's your own children. And it was, it really was, I still love you, but it was still, it still didn't sit. Yeah. It, it, it was, was an adjustment. It was, yeah. And so my thing is, is that um, that's why I started watching. So, you know, but um, I bought some books. You have my information. And um, look at my sister talk about she telling the truth. Um, <laughs> and um, and so my thing is, my sister is, is encouraging me to do more online stuff, especially because of uh, COVID. So, you know, I'm going to get out there. Yeah. Well, they just sat there and said, we need her for a full show. So when, it, when we come back to a show, don't you get, we, we want to have you back. And okay? I'll right. bring a, a demonstrator so I can show you some of those spots. I'll, you know, hey, you know, I'll show you where to touch and all those things. So, so. Oh, well, yeah, we're going we to talk to you. We're going to set that one up. Right. Because we and actually, you're so crazy about I it. The crazy you. about you guys. Oh, well, thank you. I want to say thank you. And, uh, and we'll be in touch with you. Okay, darling? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. So with that, well, with that being said, the crazy thing about it, you guys, is that we did plan out the whole season for this show, right? And then we were just like, stop, right? We 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 was getting all the flyers, we was getting everything done. We was like, you know what? Stop because it's so many. It, it was so many other things popping up, and it's just like this. I would love to have this conversation, to have that conversation, right. and like one of the things too, to Derek's point. One of the conversations that we want to have, and you guys have even emailed in about this, is the trauma that sometimes gay men experience going to the barbershop. Mm-hmm. 
trying to trying to move as if you're not gay, mm -hmm. trying to trying to pass, if you will, mm -hmm. and then sometimes even participating in the homophobia that happens. Mm -hmm. So that's so yes. the conversation. So yeah, so we we are we're gonna be throwing these conversations in. Um, mm -hmm. this this was great. This was good. This, I mean, I'm, I'm very, I was a little nervous about this. Well, I was nervous about the conversation because I didn't know what the conversation was going to be. I didn't either. And I, I was kind of, I don't know. I, I wasn't really sure if this conversation was really going to flow. Right. But it did. But it did. But it did. Well, you know, we're, we're just good hosts. <laughs> so we are ready for our next conversation that's, that's going to happen in, in two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. Let me roll the banner at the bottom first before I pull that flyer up. Because if you want to participate in this next conversation, the banner is scrolling at the bottom. The email address, I should say, is scrolling at the bottom. It's glmconvo at gmail.com. And that conversation is domestic violence in the LGBTQ. And you know, and, and it's so crazy. I didn't know this was gonna be, but it's so funny. I was just at dinner. Yeah. And this one, this this person I was just at dinner. Well, one of the people that was at the birthday party, mm -hmm. he was there, he was. Show us his picture. And he's got blood running on his face. It looked like a movie set. Yeah, you know, and and and, and it was a domestic violence situation. Really, and you know, and I and I and they thought I was rude for asking this question, but I thought it was a legitimate question. I yeah. said, "Well, are y'all still together?" And then he was like, "No, why would you?" And I'm just like, "Well, the thing that's that's a legitimate that is a, now I don't know if I would have asked if this was somebody that I didn't know. Why but that, not?" You show me your bloody picture. That means so you you inviting questions. You're inviting me, questions. Questions. True, you're, to, you're fair, inviting to, me to your conversation. So yeah. therefore, yeah. I need to ask. Like, are y'all still dating? But that yeah. is a legitimate question. Yeah. Nevertheless, because that because because if y'all still dating, then that that now changed my conversation with you. And see, here's the thing. Oftentimes, whether it's gay people, because it's not just gay men that are involved in domestic violence, it's gay women as well. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, the domestic situations, period, whether it's heterosexual or gay. Um, the person still remains, the, the victim stays in the relationship and of course will still have sex. Mm -hmm. I did a whole conversation on So Much To Say podcast about domestic violence mm -hmm. and I have a friend and I'm going to try to get him to come on and tell his story. But he was hitting his head with an iron, mm. like an iron. And he had to get like 16 or 17 staples in his head. I was there with him when he got the staples in his head. Like it happens more often than not. So with that being said, we are look so we would like to this so this is one of our heavier conversations. Yeah. So we want we want to handle this lightly. This is not an entertainment conversation. Uh -huh. Um so we would love to talk to people that either one has been in domestic violence. You were either the victim or the abuser. Or the abuser. I know somebody who was an abuser too. I might get him, try to get him on yeah. you too. Abuser. Um and if and if you Past or present, yeah. And if it's present and you don't want to be, you don't have to show your face. We can just hear your voice, yeah. Um, but we would love to have that. Um, they say get Sydney for that conversation. Yeah, Sydney was Sydney shared his domestic violence okay. story as well. He did, and you know we've talked about it, mm -hmm. and I think that he he's even said on the live um, that he believes that's why he gained so much weight. It's almost like, it's almost like a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, it sometimes happens with, um, people who are, um, victims of um, sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times they'll put on weight subconsciously mm -hmm. as a way to not be a, as attractive mm -hmm. in their mind. So nobody else will violate them. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, yeah. So, that, so that's the conversation we have next. Um, support our cash, and cash app because all this stuff costs us. And mm -hmm. um, we are paying for it. We are. Yes. Oh, it's way over there. <laughs> so if you like to contribute, you can. Yes. Um, it's GLM Combo on Cash App. Yep. And again, if you're going to participate in this conversation, please email us. It's scrolling right here at the bottom. GLMConvo at gmail.com. Now, let me just say this, because Derek and I were supposed to do a conversation about this last week, but we pulled y'all together. We're trying to pull us together. We did do it. Oh, we did. Oh, we did. Yeah, we, we did. did. Yes. But we'll reiterate it. If you don't like the panelists that come on here, then email us so you can participate. Because oftentimes we will get emails from some of you saying you all didn't have somebody that said this and oh, this was just terrible. Oh yeah, you know. So, so email you, in, email in, and we're here and, and have so we can have this conversation. Mm -hmm. We want to say thank you guys for being part of this conversation. I learned a lot. We can't wait to have Shaniqua back to give us a class mm -hmm. on um, those twelve G spots that the men has. Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, thank you guys for having us. All right. Thank you, Leslie. She said, check the cash app. We thank appreciate you. that. Thank you so, so much. So listen, we'll see you guys in two weeks. So two yes. weeks from today. But email us now if you want to participate in that conversation. That is not just for gay men. So if you are a lesbian or trans mm -hmm. and you want to participate in that conversation, you're welcome to as well. Did you want to have women come in on that? Straight women? Well, no, we gave them today. All right. So this is for LGBTQ she plus people. Someone. Yes. I mean, it says it in the title. Right. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>